Hey folks and welcome to Tully River Quail. I uh, just wanted to go over with you some stuff here that um, my incubator had need some repairs and so I have it apart and I wanted to do a little bit better dive on some of the wiring that I did. Um, I might not have addressed this when I did the, the build as I think I focused more on the tray system that I made and I'll just go over that real quick with you. Um, this has a quarter inch aluminum body to it that retains the heat so when I take the tray out to candle that it holds the heat and keeps the eggs a little bit warm. I have a plexi plexiglass or Lexan front on here so when the heat circulates inside the incubator it um, keeps the heat on the inside and I can go in and take out a tray and it doesn't change the inside temperature um, as much as it would if this was a graded or open face. But anyway, that's something um, neither here nor there. Let's just talk about the wiring. Okay, so what I use is a ZL7901. One a by Lily Tech, and that's my controller, right? And then I also have a circulation fan, and this is the thing that's caused a problem. My fan stopped blowing in there. Now I'll show you the inside of this, but I want to go over the wiring here. The fan stopped working. I got a error message up here that you know said the fan wasn't working. It was on my last hatch. The hatch didn't go through. So I need to replace the fan just to keep the temperature uniform. Um, I'll show you the inside of this and you can see the fan that I use. Let me take this off. This is just my window that I put in. I cut a hole in the front of the dishwasher and riveted in a piece of thick plexiglass. Now here's all my wiring. That is covered with the original insulation plus something I made for the window and that keeps it insulated but I'll go through this wiring here in a minute but just to show you the components that are on the inside so there's my fan I put a little it's a fireplace fan <clears throat> that's called an AC Affinity T10 air blaze right so it sucks the air from the top and blows it down the bottom and that circulates everything through and you can see how I have a secondary heater here which is basically a uh, hot plate from an oven that I put a metal plate over top and I suspended it from the roof that only comes on that's H2 that only comes on when the second heater is necessary when the heat is very low um, my main heater is the dishwasher heater that's the circular tube down there and then the drain is a bucket that I use and I use a mist maker and you can see the plug for that is right there so I have all this wire um, run through the side using wire cables and stuff and I have another little vent on the side in the back there and like I said trays tray racks and stuff but all right so anyway that fan wasn't turning I was getting a signal on this secondary controller the cool thing about using these AC infinity fans with these controllers is that you can set this to go on and off at a certain time it also has a temperature and a humidity control so you can compare that with your main controller to make sure that they're both um, on par if one would say something different and the other one um, then you'd be able to say hey something's going on now I also check my temperature with a manual thermometer I have other little thermometers in there like this one and I also use this gun so temperature is the number one reason why incubation fails so I maintain that temperature all right so here's my wiring I have four lights 
that are on the inside of the door that I control with this button right here. Right, so I push that button and these lights come on. Um, that's wired to this controller that goes to a power source down here, a 12 volt power source. Right there. And if you see what I did, is I put these two plugs down here, outlets, and each one of these plugs is controlled by the controller. So this is the egg turner. Now, what I do with the egg turner is I have a uh, power strip that goes into the incubator and all of my egg turning motors plug right into that power strip. And whenever this, is, this outlet is energized by the controller, then that powers that power strip, which in turn powers all of the things, the egg turner machines. All right, and each one of the egg turner machines has a switch so I can turn that on and off when it's time. Day 12, I turn it off and uh, then they don't turn and I move them up to a different tray. So I have a light, I have the exhaust fan, I have the humidifier, which is a little mist maker that goes in the bucket that fits in here on a float so I can fill that up with a tube that I have from an external source. So whenever it starts to get low, I just have a look inside and I turn the crank using this tubing and that reservoir behind the incubator. So I don't have to open the door to, to fill the humidity. Whenever I see that it's lower than what I want it to be and it's not being able to, to keep up, then I just add some water and it's automatically these mist makers, um, I have one out here, I believe. These mist makers, they have to be at about this much water, right? So if you have a float, it'll float it at a certain temp or a certain level, so that the it'll it'll either sputter if it's too low, or it won't make any mist if it's too high. So it has to be submersed at a proper level, and they make floats for them $10. Um, I just ordered a new one of these. And again, I have this plug so I can replace these if I need to. But they get corroded, unless you're using distilled water. And even if you are, um, the aluminum ones get pretty beat up pretty quickly. That's funny. The bottom doesn't, but the sides sure do. So I got a black plastic casing one. It's a little cheaper. But it's the same mechanism with the removable vibrating ultrasonic disc that creates the mist. Um, anyway, that goes in a little bucket that fits in that hole. All right, back to the wiring. So here I have the circulation fan, and then I have another unswitched 110 volt here just in case I needed something. And then this is my H2, that's my heater. The secondary heater. Now the primary heater is just hardwired. I don't have it plugged in because that goes to two pegs that come through the bottom from where the circular heating unit is. And that's just hardwired right to this wiring. Now a lot of this cabling was already here, right? And that's from the original dishwasher. So I just kept it in there and cut it to as long as I needed to or as could just to keep the wires and then I match the colors to what I wanted to do and uh, use the existing wire as much as I could instead of running new wire. Um, a lot of new wire I did run but anyway let's go back to these lights. So some of these lights each one of these and I guess I can show you again they're just little puck lights that are in the door So sometimes you can just run the positive to the positive to the positive to the positive and then connect all the negatives and run it in series like that. But sometimes you have to run them where you're getting positive negative to each one. And it depends when you do it, at least on these lower voltage ones, um, you get the same amount of electric 
if you run a positive line to each one as opposed to going from the positive to the negative to the positive to the negative in a series, right? So you want to run these in parallel so that they all get the same power. Um, and then it's a 12 volt lighting system I stole from a boat, my boat. So this is a transformer that I have a little plug there that changes this from the 110 to the 12 volt system. All right, let's look on the inside of this. So again, I matched all the wires, the colors, so I knew when they ran. So this is the fan. The fan's going to be red and white. The light's going to be brown. The heat's yellow. So I have them marked. And then, again, this is how they're wired into here. Um, so you basically... The way I did it is I connected these to power outlets except for H1 which was the primary heater because that just went direct. That's this red one. Um, and again I don't want to flip the machine over just to show you where it connects to that but anyway these each one of these other devices that may need to be changed out or might need to be removed someday or fixed um, I kept those so that they could be plugged in, plugged out, and removed should something happen. All right. And then what I did with my dishwasher is I just cut a hole, took the old plate out, and then mounted the controller inside the hole of the facing. Here's my little exhaust fan. Um, that's a little, little 4 watt or 5 watt AC fan. It's a little puck fan. So it'll suck the stuff from the inside and blow it out through the face and that works good for me so here's the AC infinity thing so it has a power thing that goes to a power block a transformer that controls the power it also has a plug-in for the temperature and humidity controller and then this is the fan connector so I'm going to replace this fan so I have to take this fan out and snake it back through and put it in there if the fans bad so when I get this new replacement unit first what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into power and I'm going to see if it runs the fan that's in there if that's the case then this is the problem if not then the fans a problem and I'll just rewire the fan and plug it back in everything else I can pretty much address without having to take it apart but uh, this because it's the connections way up here it'd have been nice if there was a connection on the fan that I could separate kind of like one of these little deals and then just take the fan out and pop it out which I guess I could wire because it's a little four wire connector but I didn't expect it to fail so it's probably not the fan it's probably this and maybe it's this because this is where all the humidity gets sucked to and maybe it's got a little bit of water damage so what I might do is put a little plastic over top of this just to pr better protect it and seal it when I fold this back together. But it is pretty well cut off with the insulation. Once I fit the insulation over top of this hole, the insulation goes around here and just exposes this. It's a good time to clean the inside of my stuff. All right, see if there's anything else of interest down here. Um, this is a 12-volt transformer, so this gives me 110 to 12 volt, so I can use it for certain things if I want. And then I just have everything, well, it's not as neatly bundled as it was, but I have everything zip-tied and corded up, and I have it exposed so I can remove it here in a minute. Um, this is kind of unique here so the heating element that I use is from a blue star range for the secondary heater now I have that run right on the 110 but if I had it on full force it would get too hot too fast so I have it so that it just gets enough juice on a light switch dimmer and that's about a hundred degrees right there so it'll turn on, get enough juice for that heater block that's above, up inside there that I have suspended from the, the top 
of the inside chamber. I have that set so when it gets juice, it gets about 100 degrees heat and no more because I don't want to cook anything. If it happens to get turned on for too long and it was up at full blast, then that wouldn't be a good deal. So anyway, these dishwashers make a pretty ideal um, incubation unit. It's not too hard to deal with. Um, you just take out the dishwasher motor, which is all plastic that just comes right out. And the chamber is already insulated a little bit, but it does come with insulation. Now, when I put this in my cabinet area, I have these foam boards that go around it as well. One in the back, one across the top, just as secondary protection because I do incubate in the wintertime. Um, and we've had good 80 something percent success rate most of the time, except for this last hatch. Now what had happened is we had some type of power surge last week on day five and I came in and the temperature was down. So even though I had eggs go to candle on day 12, just none of them hatched. So on day 20, I took them all out and fed them to nature. So today I'll get my new AC Infinity. I'll get a control unit. It's uh, $89. Now you can get ones without this controller that's $69. In fact, I think you can even get them right now on Amazon for 10% off. So that would just be the fan itself that's back there, right? So that fan right there and a little remote control, something like that, that you can just turn it on and off and it has 10 different levels on there. Now that would be fine, but I wanted the secondary um, ability to monitor the temperature and uh, humidity and it was just cooler and I needed to fill in some space here. All right. All right, so that's how we have it. Now, on my other unit that I do, instead of having this on two separate blocks, when I made my wine cooler, right, I use one of these, and I took this apart, and I wired each one each plug instead of having two little blocks metal blocks down there i wired each one to the heater one heater two light and then i had an extra one that i left over plus humidifier so i have it in the back strapped under the bottom and like i said instead of having these two big bricks which fit here but they didn't fit in my wine cooler one and uh that that was a way for me to have a removable situation instead of cutting plugs and hardwiring everything if i wanted to take a component out upgrade it whatever then i can just unplug it from the strip in the back and i labeled each one so that uh everybody i know where everything is and if someone else wants to buy this unit then they can deconstruct it and know what's wired where uh i have a problem with this guy I can't take it apart now, but I tried to use a cheap controller to try to a little touch screen thing, but that worked for about an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this guy, which is a uh, XM 18D, and then I have that with a little connector so I can quick disconnect that so this guy will just get plugged into the wall the controller will get plugged through that connector and I'll use that real controller to control this one um, my goal was is to use that controller to control a couple different boxes so let's say I just wanted to do a tabletop incubator then I'll just have the same plug for the control, that guy in the back there, I don't know if you can see, if I can point to that. 
there. <laughs> I'll just have that end coming out of a box. Even something as simple as one of those boxes up there with a heat source, a fan, and whatever. Humidifier. And then I can run small, medium, and large cabinetry out of one controller. And with this U.S. Coil Cooperative um, that we're starting where we're going to try to have our own line of equipment, that's going to be a thing that we're going to offer, a controller module and then incubation boxes of size. So you could actually run two if you wanted to where that controller would plug into one box and then there would be a splitter box. So if you wanted to run two cabinets, that would be something you could do and it would control them and then you can individually shut off the turners as you need to which I think would be a pretty cool novel idea to have a Swiss Army knife of incubators. That way you could have a small one, a wall-mounted one, um, and depending on what needs you wanted to do, whether you wanted to run you know, commercial stuff like we do, if you're gonna run a, a system of balutes or a, a box of balutes and then a box of hatching eggs, um, this gives you the ability to have one controller and then multiple little boxes. So anyway, if you have any questions about this dishwasher DIY build, um, a lot of the stuff that we got was from a local salvage yard that specializes in metal. Um, some of the stuff we had here, like the deck board that I cut in half there for the sides, but the metal plate, um, the angle iron, the aluminum angles for the side, um, that's all stuff that we salvaged from the salvage yard and all this electronic boxes and stuff um, those were just left over from work here there's one on the wall there all right so say goodbye to the birdies these guys are going into freezer camp here as soon as I can bring myself to doing it I got a whole box full of them all right Tully River quail over and out stay free